This video is going to be a demonstration on the differences with rise time profiles and why we would use rise time when rise time is actually um, applicable to our patients and our modes of ventilation and our modes of delivery. The first thing to know is our rise time is only active when we're use, using a pressure delivery. So if you're in a volume mode of delivery, whether in assist control or SIMV, your rise time is not active. So again, only in a pressure delivery do we worry about rise time. In a volume mode of ventilation, our breath is delivered over a, a certain amount of time based on our inspiratory time. And our inspiratory time is what drives our IDE ratio. And you can see that if I push my eye time, you can see that my IDE ratio pops up. And based on a rate of 12, we have an IDE ratio of one to four. Our rise time, again, is only active when we're in a pressure delivery. And so again, to select rise time, you have to hold our select button down for about three or four seconds. Our backup menus pop up and we wanna go to our vent op. Hit select and then hit select again. And this is where we have our different profiles. And because I didn't start the vent over, we're actually right now in a rise time profile of one, but it will default at a rise time profile of four. And it goes all the way up to a rise time profile of nine. So what does that mean? A rise time is one second. That's the amount of time that the breath is held in pressure, but your rise time profiles, that's the amount of time the breath is delivered. So over a certain amount of time, and I like to use the analogy in my ventilator book, if you're driving to Disney World with your family, right? You got your kids in the back of the car, they're so excited. The amount of time it takes to drive there is your rise time. The amount of time you stay at Disney World at the park is your eye time. And again, this is only in pressure. And so when would we use a rise time profile of nine versus a rise time profile of one? Well, a rise time profile of one would be somebody that is very hypoxic and air starved. They're, they're, they may have higher pips. And so always think of this as somebody that needs a lot of peep. You would use a rise time profile of one in a CPAP patient. And a rise time profile of nine, if it's delivering that breath over a longer period of time, again, a rise time profile of nine is delivered over nine tenths of a second. A rise time profile of one is delivered over a tenth of a second. And so every rise time profile, rise time profile of two is two tenths of a second, and then three tenths of a second, and so on until we get to a rise time profile of nine. And now that is delivered over nine tenths of a second. And so I'm gonna change this right now to a rise time profile of nine, and I want you to look at this lung and watch how that breath is now delivered. You should see the big difference in how that lung is inflating really slowly. So think about this as a patient that maybe needs more alveolar recruitment. Maybe this is a patient that's hypoxic, uh, maybe an ARDS patient, something like that where you wanna optimize that, that functional residual capacity, you wanna maintain recruitment of those alveoli as long as possible. Now if I hit select and I turn this down to a rise time profile of one, you should be able to see a big difference in how that breath is delivered. And so that is a very rapid inflation of that lung. Again, I think this is a tool that's underutilized. You may not even know that this is in the back of the vent. And I really recommend you playing with this. Again, this defaults on every patient. If you start with new patient, defaults at a rise time profile of four. And you can easily manipulate this and really affect your patient in a positive way if you understand which rise time profile is going to be more beneficial. Again, think about that CPAP demonstration. A CPAP patient, those patients are peeping. They're, they're not really working real hard to breathe. And that's why you may go with CPAP over BiPAP. A BiPAP patient is going to be a patient where you're going to want to allow them a bi-level um, a BiPAP patient is going to be a patient where you're going to want to allow them a bi-level pressure to, to exhale over. 
And so those patients may be working harder to breathe. They may be fatigued. They may have external retractions. And they may benefit from a bilevel pressure. A CPAP patient, those patients are not fatigued. They just may need a little bit of peep, a little bit of help with overall driving pressure and opening those alveoli. And so, again, if you have any questions, please email me at eric.bauer at flatbridgehead.com, and I'll definitely get back to you, and we'll talk to you soon.